Good afternoon. I'm Miami Sikumbi, Assistant Professor of Dermatology and Pathology at the Medical College of Wisconsin in Milwaukee. And today I have the honor and pleasure to be interviewing today Dr. Omar Jacobson. Dr. Jacobson is the uh, founder and former director of the Dermatopathology Fellowship Program and Associate Professor of Dermatology and Pathology at Montefiore Medical Center and Albert Einstein's College of Medicine in the Bronx, New York. He's currently the owner of Bridge Dermatopathology and also works as a consultant dermatopathologist for um, Inglewood Hospitals. It is a true honor to interview today, sir. Well, it's a privilege and honor to be here. Thank you very much for inviting the invitation yeah. um, and I'm so thrilled to be being interviewed by a young African dermatopathologist in training and that's a wonderful experience for me so I'm looking forward to this. Thank you and um, I'm happy you mentioned that one of the things that struck me and got me excited when I saw that I was going to get the opportunity to interview you was to really review that background that we are indeed fellow Africans I'm um, yes. originally from Nigeria He's South African, and one of the things that I've been near and dear to my heart is how can we contribute? How can I give back um, to the continent and to really um, advance the field of dermatopathology? And I'd be real, really interested in hearing your thoughts about that. Well, when I first um, left South Africa, I had just done a six-month uh, rotation in dermatology where I saw a lot of patients with leprosy and Kaposi sarcoma and various tropical diseases that afflict a lot of African people and um, when I came to New York and started learning dermatopathology um, with Dr. Ackerman at New York University I suddenly I had this feeling that I was in the wrong place mm. and that I was looking at um, Western diseases and pr diseases that um, well-to-do people were getting so I had this strong feeling that I too would want to go back and give and and give something t back to um, the societies in Africa where mm. where I where I grew up and um, um, I never did because uh, one gets mm -hmm. one starts concentrating on the career at yeah. hand. But every year I used to go back and I used to go back and give lectures and attend clinics and consult on cases. So in that way, I started contributing. Um, and that's something you can start doing as soon as you finish training if you feel um, that you have enough to, to, to um, give, which you probably will. Um, and then there are clinics um, and exchange relations, uh, exchange programs. I'm certainly in, there's a, there's a big program in Tanzania, in Arusha, where, mm -hmm. where there's a dermatology clinic and they have a need for um, experienced pathologists and dermatopathologists, I did participate in a telemedicine project there where I used to receive specimens from the clinic there and, and evaluate them and give my diagnoses across by telemedicine and that's starting to work. Mm. So there, so you don't even have to return physically but you can participate mm. in, in that way. So there, there, there are various ways of doing it. Of course, um, the best thing is to actually go back yeah. to the country and get your hands in, <laughs> in get hands dirty and get involved exactly yeah. so but but you know there are many ways to try and do it there's also a program in Botswana where um, you can go and work in a clinic there and do derm path so um, many many avenues and certainly mm -hmm. South Africa has a serious need for for trained uh, physicians never mind dermatologists and dermatopathologists. Mm -hmm. so there's a de real need, whereas in the United States, of course, there are many of us mm -hmm. and the job market is tight. And, yes. Uh, you know, so, so um, if you are altruistic, yes. um, there's a lot that you can do. Well, I'll have to talk to yeah. you uh, some more about that off camera, okay. about all the opportunities so I can get myself uh, plugged in. Back to the United States now. I know that you ran and really started founder the course, the Titanic course, and I yes. thought that was an interesting name, and I thought I want to know about what that course was all about. Well, um, it started off when I was training, and um, and then obviously through my experience in that, um, uh, physicians, dermatologists, were removing 
tissue by shave technique and often you would get specimens that were so tiny that you didn't have an idea yeah. of what was yeah. underneath them. And um, I trained uh, with, uh, with Dr. Jeff Gottlieb and he, you know, he used to talk about this as a, uh, the iceberg, iceberg dermatopathology, he called it. So I decided that I would do a consultation course here and because of the iceberg comparison, I called it the Titanic. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I'd gathered a whole yeah. lot of specimens yeah. and the, the subsequent excisions or, mm -hmm. the, or the bad outcomes mm -hmm. and, and, and I put those together yeah. and ran the course here. Mm -hmm. And uh, I hope it was useful. Yeah. Um, I also did a lecture on it, uh, the Italian Society of Dermato Dermatology and Dermatopathology in Turin. Yeah. Um, on it and mm. uh, and and at, and as grand rounds at Montefiore and Einstein um, and uh, yeah it, I think I think it's very useful and what what what, what I find and I, I did talk about this at the meeting last year is that when you go to an academic meeting mm. like this everything's cleaned up mm. you know people present stuff that's been worked up with beautiful specimens perfectly or packaged. And it has nothing to do with reality, yeah. really. And, and I thought that I needed to do something to show people that the real world is very different from mm -hmm. a meeting because, you know, that's not your experience. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be spending your days looking at rare lymphomas or crazy spitz tumors, mm -hmm. whatever. What you're going to be looking at are you know, these little specimens mm -hmm. and you have to deduce from these tiny pieces of tissue what what is going on mm -hmm. underneath them so you mm. protect the patients mm. from 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 the poor mm. from I hate to say this but from the poor te poor techniques that are being sure. done to them and it's not sometimes it's not the clinician's fault because they don't want to cause a scar or whatever but yeah. but ultimately when you biopsying a lesion the reason you should be biopsying it is to get an answer not to be concerned about cosmesis and um, so what happens is there's such an imbalance because mm -hmm. of fear of causing some sort of aesthetic problem yeah. for the patient who will then complain or sue you. Yeah. <laughs> but, the, but the worst part of it is that, that missing the diagnosis yes. is, is more important. Yeah. So, so, um, so that's, what I, that's what I thought I would do with that course. And I stopped doing it um, because I, 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 had a, I, I just couldn't put the time into it um, when I stopped um, hmm. uh, uh, for various reasons. Yeah. <laughs> but but uh, I find exactly like what you said, in addition to the sampling issue, I find that the gap also in terms of the lack of clinical information makes this really the perfect storm. Yeah, absolutely. So you have the inadequate biopsy samples that it's yeah. already challenging, and then you have the absence of any information to perhaps yeah. guide guide the dermatopathologists. Well, that's very true, and it, it, and it also goes to, that goes to training. I mean, that goes to um, the, the de degradation of training of clinical dermatologists in program, residency programs in the country, where the focus of most programs and most residents, I, I have to say, is more on the surgical and the cosmetic than on the medical outcomes of their patients. And um, medical dermatology is in crisis because training of medical dermatologists is on the decline mm -hmm. and the, 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 the number of people who are doing medical dermatology is, is, is so declined so much, it, certainly in our area, people who've got real problems can't get appointments. Mm -hmm. and, uh, so, and, and then there's also a push in, in, in dermatologists to see as many patients as they mm -hmm. can to generate as much income. Mm -hmm. So there's huge problems mm -hmm. and this all goes into, <laughs> yeah. this all goes into why yeah. no one fills in the form yeah. to give you the information you need yeah. when you're looking at a slide without yeah seeing the patient is yeah. that that people aren't taking the time not, that is needed not taking the time to provide the information to right. give the patient the, the care that they they do deserve and it puts the dermatopathologist in a difficult situation mm -hmm. and i'll tell you that i feel sometimes a lot of cases i'm spending time on the phone trying to reach a clinician to get some information to perhaps 
go that extra step to see what we can do. But when you have that stack of work and the pile, it becomes harder and harder to do yes, that. Absolutely. I agree. I agree. I so it's it's um, nice to hear that you're 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 going through the same struggles and hopefully um, the tides will day. turn. Yes, every day. it's a <laughs> it's a daily struggle. Yeah. And so now, what, what are your thoughts about the future of our specialty? Where do you see dermatopathology in, say, 10 years? Well, um, that's a very difficult question to yeah. answer because um, there's, several, there's several trajectories. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, the immediate one is the involvement of venture capital money mm -hmm. in buying up dermatology practices. And that poses a huge problem because this places dermatologists in in who buying it, who's selling into these practices, and people who are being employed. The reason these people are doing it is to to maximise profit. So they're hiring PAs, yeah. they're hiring people who are untrained, and and then they're hiring dermatopathologists and paying them. And, and not paying them mm -hmm. what they should be paying. So, so the, <laughs> so the, there you go. You have like unskilled people yeah. do, seeing patients, and then you have dermatopathologists who are taking these jobs who are also not probably just they're probably just out of training. Yeah. And uh, so that's the one yeah. one trajectory. The other the other thing is the the evolution of technology both in the digital world and uh, the molecular world, mm -hmm. where um, regular H&E is being shifted to the side. So, so, you know, in 10 years' time, are you going to actually be looking at slides? Or, you know, or images. Are you gonna be looking at, or are you going to be looking at um, um, DNA, yeah. DNA chips yeah. and, 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 and graphs yeah. and all yeah. that stuff? So. From my point of view, yeah. is 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 um, I'm pleased because I'm at the stage of oh. my career <laughs> where I can't do that stuff. Yeah. So so um, you know, I, if I was starting to starting out now, I'd I'd I'd, I'd be learning molecular t you know p pathology sure. and how to deal with. Um, genes and uh, sure. CGH and these things because um, that's that's the way things look like that's the wave going. of the future um, so um, as we wrap up any final thoughts a young dermatopathologist like myself starting off her career you have uh, an established career a very um, a very successful career any final thoughts words of advice wisdom for the young dermatopathologist well my my biggest lesson from my career, I would say, is experience. Experience is the greatest teacher. And if you have somebody who's experienced in the right way um, to, to mentor you, and you start off your career in that situation where you can show your problems to a, a more experienced person, You'll learn through experience um, how to deal with day-to-day -day problems mm -hmm. and putting things together. So it, th that's the that's the first thing. Experience. It, there's no replacement for experience. The other thing that I would say is, throughout your career, humility, being humble, is the key. Because if you are not if you don't realize your limitations it will come back to bite you mm -hmm. because because um, diseases and patients and don't, don't follow textbooks mm -hmm. and you have to always be um, humble in the in the face of disease so if you don't know something or you think you know something but you have a doubt, always remember that you can ask somebody. Mm. So never be too proud because you, you will be humbled. Yeah. So that would be the two things I would give to you or tell you yeah. and that I try to tell my fellows mm. 
in their training is um, when you see somebody doing something, it's not easy. It's taken a lot of experience mm. to get to that point. So um, I know when I was a, a fellow and I saw Dr. Ackerman going yeah. through hundreds of slides in a day and, and I thought, how does he look do yeah. this? And, 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 um, and, and when I started off, I thought, oh, I can do this too. Yeah. You know, it's not so, it's a, not so difficult. But the fact of the matter, it is. Yeah. And you, so you, you always have to yeah. be very humble in the face of disease and, ex yeah. And well, thank you so much. This has really, truly been an honor. I appreciate all the insights you've shared with both myself and our viewers. Um, thank you for your time today, Dr. Jacobson. I hope you enjoy it's the rest of the meeting. It's a pleasure and, and good luck. Thank I wish you, you the very best much. of luck and maybe one day we'll meet in Tanzania. I would love that. I would love it's, that. It's the most beautiful place in the world.